All right, son. What are we calling right, this? By the way, by the way, can I just say this? Uh, this set right here. Yeah. So much more comfortable here than uh, down than down, the, down there. The set. It looks number one great. Like, 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 the, like the biggest thing is number one. I can see Chad. Mm -hmm. So like like he can give me directions like technically. And number two, like I feel like we're also on more of the same footing. Like it's like a one shot for you. It's a one shot for me. Like I don't have like a bunch of crazy nonsense going on. Like I'm going to like bring on 17 guests or something. Yeah, like, sure. It, it's just it's it's perfect for NSFW. Yeah, no, it, it feels it felt it felt really good. This this whole thing. Um, this, uh, uh, okay. And also, I mean, I like also that we could switch between these two things so that we can get some variety in there. And actually, this is the first time I've used this view right here. I like that too. Yeah, dude, absolutely. I'll tell you what, if there was ever a point, I mean, number one, you just need to move your entire family out to Northern California so we can all live in the same house, like a Mormon, uh, compound. Yeah. I'm telling you, man, one of the best times of my entire life was when we uh, we created this giant clubhouse uh, in my senior year of college and everybody all sitting together. Crisis of conscience. Um... <laughs> I like how you just completely bailed on the story you were telling when you <laughs> saw a title you like. You're like, best time of my life was when uh, right after college, me and a bunch of my friends, R.I.P. Postini, work for Brian... NSFW 143, 53, rather. Drubo. Should we go with Drubo? Drubo. Seriously, it was uh, really an indelible time <laughs> where a lot of my friends got here. Best death ever. Pra Patrice makes perfect jury nipple. Because there's so many people and so many emotions I'm and really we bonded on stied. a level. We are going to have a good time. <laughs> Brian's casting couch. No Hitlers. <laughs> no. Oh, man. Cheeto, Jesus. What, what, what did he say? <laughs> I love <bitches. laughs> Okay. I don't right. even know if that's... By the way, did I win the belt when I said the P-U-S word? I don't is that... know. I don't think that... Is that allowed on Twin? I don't know. It depends on yeah. the context. I called Speed Racer that. <laughs> oh, dude, that was so funny. That was the best mail route read yet. It was. Oh my god, was, that was, was. No, that wasn't. Was that mail route or was that, uh, that was mail route? Because it was on spam. Five. It was spam. Actually, we were colorful. No. Oh, 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 oh no! The mail route read was the whole. Was the yeah the back and forth? Yeah, yeah. That was. Uh, but uh, what was Pond Five? Oh, Pond Five was Cook <laughs> and the racist badger. I love this this bizarre sideways world where two drive time DJs can just tell everyone. And they're stepping on the song. Like the cardinal rule of a pop station is don't step on the song. Hit the post and then get out. And then like let them let the people listen to their music. And, and they're just... doing the one thing that you can't do on a pop station. Talk <laughs> With... on the song. And with an important message about how cool it is to do how awesome it is to drive drunk. It starts off with an anti drug driving PSA and then just evolves into like another guy saying, No, 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 it's awesome. And then the other guy agreeing, No, you're right, it is. <laughs> and then I also got replaced by Goober AU, the Aussie. Because I screwed up the Simpsons versus uh, <laughs> the critic. Critic. Uh, the quote. critic. The critic was way uh, undervalued at its time because it was over the top in a way that uh, the Simpsons wouldn't go. In fact, the critic is really kind of the spiritual predecessor to uh, Family Guy because Family Guy, uh, you know, also went crazy over the top. And every time, well, like, certainly, it was certainly in terms of the pop culture aside, yes. because, uh, you know, the critic had the, the narrative out of him reviewing Movies. films. Sure. And so he would constantly cut to these like four second jokes of, you know, like movies that would deal with pop culture subjects or whatever. I right. never thought of it like that, but that's definitely, it definitely makes a lot of sense. I was obsessed with the critic, by the way. Oh, dude, Watched I love every, it. I love every, every episode of the critic. And then when it came on comedy central and TBS, I would watch, over and over and over, I was so excited because it went from 
ABC to Fox, right? Yeah, well, it went from ABC to Fox and then vanished. Yeah, it was always kind of troubled to begin with. Yeah. That might have been, actually, now that I think of it, that might have been my first taste of, I love this television show, why is it going away? I'm upset that this television show is going away. Yeah, I liked, unfortunately, that that came out uh, the second time, like, right uh, as I was going to college, and, and, you know, your freshman year, you just drop all interest in television, because... Uh, cause you got other things going on. I all got, right. I got, yeah, no, it, it's a word that I already said on the show and I'm not sure if I can say on the twin stream. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, um, okay. What do we want? Uh, I liked, uh, uh, what was it? Uh, R.I. Postini. <laughs> I'm R. I don't, but that's, Postini. that's, I mean, like, we don't want to like, cause I yeah. agree. That was, that was, that was a good ad read. I don't want to spoil that ad read. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Oh, apparently, uh, my platonic friend kept trying to call in and apply for the job. Dude, everybody, uh, it is shocking how many people hit the wrong option. They hit, like, option one. Let me see how many. I have 46 missed calls. <laughs> <laughs> is, take, take, take a look-see right there, sir. At, wait, By the wait. way, I love Chimera's uh, NSFW 153. No fat chicks or Hitlers or chicks. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, that's right. The the critic did come back as webisodes brief, briefly. Um, man, there was one I liked, uh, I liked did? a lot. What? Yeah, I know. It was a series. Of, it was webisodes. I really? live alone. I don't know if I ever saw that. The quest for the golden frog. Felt really good. The whole thing. Crisis of conscience. Uh, all right. Hey, listen, somebody just put up a, and asked if I liked the poster that uh, they made of me. I can't see it, so just uh, tweet that to me. Here, I, I can show you. Yeah, this one. Oh, my God. Yeah, no, that's amazing. Yeah, they were all great. That's from the, uh, from the, the what's it called? The, uh, the Weird Things TV web series or YouTube series. These are all awesome. When is Leo getting back? I don't know. Two weeks. Holy moly. Did I say lamestream media? Because I should have. <laughs> Tony Wang, edit this out. Boy, these are great. Dude, these are great. Number one, the curly one is my favorite, by the way. That's awesome. I just, that looks, I want to hang that on my wall. That looks amazing. Yeah, go ahead and get in on this, Chad. Yeah, I, I love these. Um, uh, it's funny because the... <laughs> like, there we go. There's the Cheeto. Um, the I almost, Cowgirl, Girl. Cowgirl Girls looks great. I love the T2, T2, T2 one. T2, that's a great yeah, one. A good he one. also made a, uh, a OMG Craft. Old John one. Smokey. Yeah. Tom Merritt's um, looks good, but I, I don't think he captured the scruff. Happy Pants is great, by the way. That should probably be Fat for D Dolphin. <laughs> um, yeah. Dude, these are awesome. They're so good. Uh, okay, so let's call it Crisis there, there of There was conscience. a Sarah Lane one that was really, really good. Uh, yeah, there's a, been a ton. Guys, yeah, because he, he did all the TNT people. I need to, uh, I need to start. Uh, yeah, there's Sarah. Uh, Leo. Yeah, uh, real real quick, let's just do the billboards so that uh, I can start rendering yeah. this thing. Uh, and I'll change this to quad uh, for this. All right, and then um, I guess camera six. I'm doing billboards for all three, right? Sure. Okay. Uh, um, 153, right? This is NSFW episode 153, recorded on November 13th, 2012. Crisis of confidence. Wait, confidence, consciousness. God damn it. Double complete rainbow. This is NSFW episode 153, recorded on November 13th, 2012. Crisis of conscience. Oh, wait, hold on. Uh, here, I'll do the summary. On this episode of NSFW, we go on an exhausting hunt for Brian's next assistant. Who will it be? Will they have to fight each other and stab each other in the eyes with bamboo rods? Also, we talk about a bunch of silly things. R.L. Stein visits us, 
and a big conflict happens when the mail route read is read. Who will die? Who lives? Are there new characters? You'll find out on this episode of NSFW. Yeah. Yes. All right. Here we go. This episode of NSFW is brought to you by Ting.com. Ting is a new mobile phone service that makes sense. Save money with Ting. Pay for what you use, doesn't require a contract, and offers unlimited devices in one pooled plan. To save 50... Just, just pick it up at to save. To save $50 on your first Ting device, visit nsfw.ting.com. That's nsfw.ting.com. And mail route. Mail route is email filtering in the cloud for companies and resellers of any size. MailRoute offers live human support and one-click sign-up for free postini migration offered. Yep, hold on. For free postini migration and 10% off the life of your account, visit MailRoute.net, click the sign-up button, and enter the promo code NSFW. Pond 5. Pond 5 is the world's stock media marketplace. If you're a media maker looking for video, photos, illustration, music, or sound effects, After Effects, template, and 3D models, check out Pond5.com. And for an exclusive 50 free stock media downloads, go to... Mm, hold on, it's not written here. I think it's pond5.com slash NSFW, isn't it? Yeah, Chad? it is. Let me just double check in. And for 50 free stock media downloads, go to pond5.com slash NSFW. There we go. Tony, edit those together. Those, wow. There was a little bit of a Skype pickup that last week. No, there really? wasn't. No, you're not on Skype. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I mean, but... Oh, uh, yeah. I don't know. Maybe but, there was one. Well, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I forgot about the that. Live yeah. Stream. yeah, yeah, about that. Uh, hang on, <laughs> let me switch the... I'm going to change the settings on this. Preferences, text box. Mm -hmm -hmm. Text box. Set for um, hey, Brian, can we do just a, just a blue sky... Little uh, uh, planning session. Sure, I've been Hold thinking on. about but, it a lot. Yeah, let, let me go ahead and uh, and start uh, this render. So I'm gonna hit stop. I'm gonna hit save. Who is that guy at the bottom? <laughs> That's old John Smokey lurking behind it's David Prager. Why is he there? Behind David you Prager. Twit. No, do you see? Do you see uh, old John Smokey in the background? Oh my God, Jesus! Holy crap! Yeah. NSFW. I actually remember when that happened, and that was kind of creepy. I was afraid that that homeless guy was going to like walk in the shot and like pull down his pants. <laughs> Dude, you hear that homeless Keep viewers of, of Twit? This is your big moment. Go hang out by that Wait, window. Were they, were, were they all live in the studio? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, it was Preger, Martin, um, Mar Marty Sargent, and uh, Sarah. Yeah, it's really good. Dude, that's that's a... That's a killer group. His killer cast. It was awesome. All right, hold on. I'm saving the one way. And now I'm going to save as the other way. And then this will be the one that. Boo boo. Boo boo boo. <laughs> boo boo doodle doodle doo. Yeah, we'll throw that on there. <clears throat> Uh yeah man what's what's going on bro? Um, all right. South by Southwest, you brought it up earlier. Yeah. I want to do something cool, and if we want to do something cool, we got to think of it now and I, start working on it. I was thinking we'd do something lame. Really? Yeah, totally was. I was thinking the lamer the better. <laughs> that's, that's. Let's get together and play canasta. What do you say? Is it dirty canasta? It is a little bit saucy because <laughs> if you lose, you have to churn the butter. And you can't yes. say nosies. No. 
you turn the butter and you can't wash your hands. <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> what um, mean? Uh, yeah, man, I, I'm down for it, man. If we could start, uh, if we could start. I had an idea, and I have no I mean, idea whether and, they're into it or not. Don't, don't get me wrong. Like, South by Southwest uh, was awesome this year, especially when you grade it on the curve of how haphazard and last minute it was, right? Well, here's the thing. We dug, as we usually do, we dug a very, very fun show out of a complete last-minute nonsense with a fan base that is amazing and awesome and will make the greatest things ever happen. Correct. Because they, they buy into the silliness that we sell. However, imagine the power that we could have if we tried to do something like that earlier. Now, yes, let me just throw this out to you. And, and I'm not saying we got to go with it. This is, again, blue sky. Blue sky, right. yes. Um, remember the VH1 series Storytellers? No. Oh, wait. Right, oh, so no, no, no. oh, that's right. That's uh, somebody would sit on stage and play a song. You'd have like Neil Diamond talking about how, you know, he did. Well, yeah, 10 well, that, feet, that, uh, the, the Saturday Night Live, the, the sure. famous Will Ferrell Neil Diamond sketch was, a, was, was from the show Storytellers, where he tells, like, you know, like, this is a song about my hatred of immigrants. Right. Everywhere around the world. Right. They're coming to America. Right. Um, so that show, basically, for those of you who didn't see it, uh, after Unplugged was like a huge thing on MTV where bands would come on and play acoustic versions of their songs. Uh, VH1 did a show called Storytellers, which was kind of basically the same show, except for the fact that they would like tell the stories behind their songs. It'd be like, hey, one time I was at a, a cafe eating a bagel. This is my song, Cafe and a Bagel. <laughs> cafe and a Bagel. Like, um... So imagine a show live at South by Southwest. Yep, yep, yep. It's me and you. Yep. Just doing storyteller style interviews, like almost like inside the actor studios kind of now, interviews. Okay, now here, here's my only question to that, because I, I think that would be fun for us and that would be easy to do. Uh, uh, I mean, easy meaning we don't have to get bent out of shape and do a whole lot of preparation, but is that... What if, we, uh, well, Matt 3 is saying, what about commentary on old episodes? What if we had like okay, a retrospective? Okay, okay. Uh, hold on. Can I, can I finish this? Let me finish oh, this sure. one idea. Okay, sure, and sure, then sure. we can sure. go with, with uh, other ideas. Sure. Turquoise Jeep. So it's us with Turquoise Jeep. We talk about, uh, we have, we, they, they were very, very fun live. They were, they were, uh, and in my physical interaction with them when they were here, sure. They were very, they were into having, a, I think a silly time. And if they knew what they were going into, now that they know us, I feel like it would be even funnier and, and more over the top. So, so here's the deal. We, we talk to them and then they perform the song. So it's a combination NSFW show slash turquoise Jeep concert. Uh, <clears throat> man, uh, I, I love the idea of it. The only thing I worry about is if the energy is too different because the way I'm describing and picturing the storytellers theme, because that's a very, that's a very kind of downbeat vibe. Um, well, yeah, all, all, all I mean with the storytellers thing is that they tell the stories behind their songs, which by the way, are all ridiculous. You right. know, they're all insane, silly, like, you know, I want to have a sex with a girl with stretchy pants. Right. Like it doesn't really take a lot to get into like the motivations of that song, but we can use that as a stepping off point to have a silly conversation, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that. Uh, and, and certainly having a band element would be, would be awesome and get a lot more, uh, a lot more, uh, uh, attention, man. We'd have to, we'd have to lock in a venue and get all that stuff. Huh? Yeah. Now well, that's here, why we have to so, think so, about okay, it. Okay. Now. now here's the downside. Here's the downside. Just F yeah. F F Y I. Uh, the, the downside would be that, uh, that a substantial portion of the audience would be there just for turquoise Jeep and not for us. And sure. Considering that kind of our bit is to <laughs> essentially be openly hostile. We, we cater to our own very hard and we're almost open. It is very hard for new people 
to know what the hell is going on on our show because we're so nested within within you know joke boxes within memes within photoshops within past characters that it, well yeah but i mean i don't think that's necessarily anything that like you know like if if the context is like let's say our bit is talk about like ask the most probing questions possible about turquoise jeep songs to the people who wrote them okay. and performed them like that's a bit we can do we could do that bit on an NSFW show and like, yeah, we might here and again del delve into something that we have. That's like an inside joke for NSFW. But like, I feel like we could do 90 percent of that is going to be the jokes we're going to make about those songs. Sure. And I, obviously, listen, number one, I don't even really want to talk much more about this because like, you know, who knows if they even want to do it. Yes. You know, well, I'll tell you, what, I'll tell you who would want to do it if uh, if he's available is uh, Romney Malco. Would come out, and we could probably we could probably even, you know, move get some good attendance if it's a Romney Malco doing an NSFW thing, and we could work out stuff in advance with him. I mean, yeah, I guess the biggest thing with 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 Romney, I mean, like here's here's the biggest thing I'm thinking about in terms of both in 2013. Let's we're pulling back the curtain here, right? Sure. 2013, there are two live events that we care about for NSFW, right? Right. South by and Dragon, Dragon Con. Con. Which, by the way, maybe we should put in our applications for Dragon Con if we're serious about it. Come on. <laughs> we probably should, bro. Should probably actually make an effort to get a hotel room, too. That we should. Oh, wait. What about Nerdtown? Yeah, oh. that was BS. Uh, do you want to you wanna try to make Nerdtacular happen? You want to talk to Scott? <gasps> East well, Coast, number one, West yes. Coast? I mean... We're going to attack. I've injected myself in this conversation, and yes, and find me a room. All right. No. All right. Done and done. Yeah, I'll find your room. Scott Johnson's house. That's where everybody's staying. <laughs> um. So yeah. All right. Yeah. Of course, Nertacular. But like, of like, there there are traditionally two venues where I think like like we can go to Nertacular, have a good time with friends. Like Nertacular is like for hardcore hardcores. Like it's for people that like you know know you and me and listen to like me on the morning stream. Like, like there are people who are dialed way in. Like we can just go there, have a good time with friends and that's going to be good. Sure. Like, South by dragon con are bigger events in which like, I feel like we have an opportunity to step our game up and, and become even bigger elements of those like very large kind of ecosystems. Because and still have a great time with our friends and have a fantastic uh, entertainment option. So I think both of those, if we want to go to the next level, considering like our, our podcast is amazing. It's the best thing ever. It's changed my life, but <laughs> it does not exactly have a we're not doing crazy numbers. We have yes. the best fans ever, but we are we are a legion. We have we have that, depth. Yes. To get to step into those larger that larger context, we need things around us to turn more fans into our fans. Yes, because correct. there's nothing better than being a chat room. We really right? should kind of have a uh, should kind of have like a different mode that we switch into, like audition mode to to get more people into uh, what we're up to. People are saying that frog core is now a thing. the The Venn diagram, <laughs> the gray area of the chat realm. And Tadpool is called Frog Core. There you go. Good. Yes. Oh man. Uh, okay. So while we're blue skying, let's just have some visionary, visionary moments. Let's go. You know, Spill.com was able to have their own convention. Spill.com. Spill.com, of course. Yeah. I mean, I'm just saying. My guess is there's enough twit people. That uh, that 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 dig NSFW. That if we were to have a convention, maybe maybe more centrally located here in Austin, uh, because obviously everyone could go to the Twit Brick House and they could make it. I and mean, a lot of people make the pilgrimage. But if we were to have a convention in Austin, and uh, maybe have you know a Tom Merritt, maybe maybe get Veronica out and a few other people. What if we had our own convention, like I mean, Diamond Con? Diamond Con. I like the taste of that, Governor. 
Right? By governor, I don't mean the boring person who shows up on my television and disappoints okay, can, me. Okay, can, can we can, can we talk about that? By the way, <laughs> did uh, did you did you listen to my review on? Uh, you probably didn't watch Frame Rate that day. No, I didn't. Uh, uh, it's a uh, uh, worst episode of the third season, um, and and that's not. I'm not saying it's terrible. It was the weakest for sure. Everybody was doing uh, was do was acting outside of their strengths, and. Uh, you know, I totally believed uh, Rick's utter despair and wail at the end of last week's episode. I didn't believe for one second his descent into madness this, uh, this I'm episode. I'm crazy. I'm crazy now. Mm. Oh, crazy guy. Look at me. I'm Mr. Crazy yeah. Man. To be honest, like, that even really didn't bother me all that much. Like, uh, what bothers me more than anything and has bothered me through every moment that I've seen him on camera is the governor. Yep. Like this was this number was one, when his if trial you are running a city out. in the zombie apocalypse, you are a certain you are a man of a certain problem solving ability. It it's, does not like dealing with people like Andrea and Michonne is two hours. Yes. Max. Yes. That's a that's that's a long version of dealing with both of them. Yes. Like and uh, also and the fact that like, all right, if he wants to bang Andrea. He should have banged Andrew within eight hours of meeting her. Right. Because right. that's the kind of guy he is. Yep. If like the idea of like, what well, what do you mean you're getting up? It's it's like you're getting uh, up from like crazy zombie death match? <laughs> Which by what? the way, that's problematic too, right? Okay, so you got you've got two or three beats in Woodbury to set everybody on edge. And so you get one sort of a soft punch at the at the beginning of this season or, or earlier. Then your other they just throw away right at the beginning of, of this episode. And then, and then like, the big punch, the one that says, oh, crap, this entire town is filled with bloodthirsty, crazy people. They present in such a soft core way and such a reasonable way that you're like, oh, no, it kind of makes sense. I mean, you do need some entertainment. It's good for morale. And then it's like, like okay, if you're not going to stage it as the good guys versus the horror of Woodbury, then then... You've got to play it as, well, I like both of these people. Why are they going to war with each other? In which case, why do you waste all this time having Michonne go around saying something's not right about this town? And uh, it, I'm telling you, man, it's it's spinning his wheel. I, I'm not happy with it. Which, I mean, like, because I didn't have as big of a problem with, with Rick going, uh, you know, stock crazy pants in, in, the, uh, in, in, in the prison as much. Right. Although I did have a problem because I, I don't like, I'm not a fan in the comics of the uh, the phone call sure, device. That sure. Like, I just kind of feel like it's, like, listen. Tom loved it. it. He was actually excited that this happened. I was like, Oh, I know, he tweeted it. You're the one. Like, Tom, Tom tweeting a spoiler for something because he watched it on the East Coast feed, despite the fact that he lives on the West Coast, uh, like, is something I've never seen him do before yeah. as his friend or follower on Twitter. But he was like, I saw on Twitter before I saw it, phone call! Yes. <laughs> um, that's what I imagined him doing. Yes. Uh, but it's like, uh, it's, it, it, it's a stylistic choice. But in, in the book, it's welcome because the rest of the plot is barren. Yes, you know. it, it is a good device to add an interesting question during a very specifically a very difficult boring narrative part time. Of the plot. There, right, right. There, there's not room for anything else to happen, but it's important that you have a mystery to keep you engaged during this one phase, and it does a very good job of doing it. However, that's the last thing you need as you're going into the the, the theoretically seminal. the most interesting question you have in the show, which is. In a zombie apocalypse, which is society? civilization worth it? Yes. If it is the wrong civilization, yes. That is the question that should be answered because it is an interesting question. Absolutely. And we have not seen that because we don't know whether or not Woodbury is the wrong civilization. Right. Right. We don't comprehend that. And meanwhile, listen. Set the rooker free. Yeah, man. Just set. Set the rooker one time. Set the rooker free. Before it's all over, oh. you've died, you've squandered it. Yeah, yeah robots. Please do that. All right, hold on. Yeah. All right, I'm going to make sure this. Dylan, you know, Sorry, draining hold on. a lot. I think these allergies are, oh, crap. 
I'm I'm totally sick. So yeah, I think the problem is because like you know, and you travel a okay. ton. Yeah, it, it works. I just got to make sure that it wasn't. Let me make sure this one works too, because it's like nothing's more terrifying to me um, than when other stuff. Any kind of B roll you need, they've got. And Sean, I'm from Poughkeepsie, New York. Bad name. Hang up on him. Okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it was my favorite moment. Wait, wait, wait. You play just a second more. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I already, already happened. Damn. Bad name. Hang up on him. No! 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 <laughs> <laughs> Calgary Curtis says, I want to know what the governor did to gain Rooker's trust. And also, it seems fairly apparent that Rooker was a maniac, and by Rooker, I mean, uh, yes, no, of course, the, the character Rooker he plays, yeah. Um, that he was addicted to drugs. He had a drug problem, a dependency problem, uh, when he was on the roof in Atlanta. It does not seem like he has the same dependency problem here in Woodbury. Right. Number one, very, very interesting, just basic questions of, hey, what did drug addicts do in the zombie apocalypse when they can't call their dealer and get more drugs? Like, that's a, a issue. That would be an issue that would naturally resolve itself because drug addicts wouldn't be able to get their fix. So right. that's something you can deal with. Right. Number two, for, for Merle specifically, like, he was somebody who saw an authority figure on a roof in Atlanta and wanted to kill him. Yeah. And now all of a sudden, he's second in command to a highly organized there's system. Very, there are very good questions, and we're not saying we need answers all at once, but, you know, why don't you nibble and 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 give us tantalizing hints? Instead, it's like everybody does something stupid. It's like Michonne grabs her sword, runs, and for all she knows, slaughters test zombies for testing just to make a stink, to blow off steam because she's frustrated. Oh, just, uh, it doesn't matter. See, I feel like you are where I was last season. No, no, no. I mean, keep in mind, I'm way, way happier with uh, with this season than I was last season. Because in general, like everything, like the first several episodes have been fantastic. Yeah. But here's my problem is that like it was all fantastic to me because we had not gotten to Woodbury. And to me, Woodbury is the defining element of this franchise. Absolutely. Absolutely. The defining element. And like right now, I look at Woodbury and I'm like, yeah. <sighs> so here's the problem is they gave us too long to meet the characters there and to see them in in civil action. To, I, I, I mean, actually, I, I don't even know. Probably shouldn't even talk about because we're just going to spoil all this stuff. But. Well, I mean, like the thing is, it doesn't need to be the comic. No, like it just needs to be interesting. Like yes. it needs to provide us because I, I, like, you, like what you said. At some point, we have to look at both societies. The the ramshackle society that is besieged in the prison. Right. And what is going on in Woodbury. We need to look at them and weigh whether or not we as a consumer who are reading or watching this would like to live in either of them. That's right. We want to project and ourselves. We need to project ourselves. And like right now, of course you live in Woodbury. Like, the guy doesn't even seem like a bad guy. Yep. Except for the fact that, like, at some point he killed people randomly for a reason we have no idea. So either, like, he's the very uninteresting idea that he's just a psychopath who likes to kill military people randomly. Right. Or he's a smart guy who's paying attention to his town. Those are the only two options that we have right now. Right. Right. One is retarded for the plot. Right. And the other makes it clear, like, yes! Everybody, move to Woodbury. Michonne's being stupid. Right. Right. Yeah. No, uh, agreed. Agreed. I'm not going to give up on it. Oh, uh, and, and, well, I mean, the one moment of joy in this last episode was I did like seeing Merle as this, you know, anti-hero pro wrestler kind of character in there. But, unfortunately, that is a moment I enjoyed watching that is completely antithetical to the purpose of that scene uh, or, or at least, the purpose that scene served in the comic book. That that in the comic book that served to horrify you and make you realize that this was not the place you thought slash hoped it was. And in the television show, super soft core. And in fact, they go out of their way to say how responsible it is and and what the benefits are of doing this. So again, it's, uh, they 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 didn't just pull the teeth out of those zombies. They pulled the teeth out of Woodbury with that scene. Woo. <laughs> 
<laughs> Dropping bombs. Throwing down. All right, man. Uh, yeah. I got to call it. 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 Uh, yes, right. I was. I was upset because there was no electric fence. That's the one thing. Uh, dude, you got to play the Walking Dead game, Justin. Although I was, I was kind of mocking it last night or the other night because uh, there's a, much like Woodbury, there's a, a what appears to be on the surface a very pleasant uh, farm that you come across. And they're very big. I'm reminding you again and again that, uh, that uh, well, we're all okay because we have this electric fence run by a generator that keeps the walking dead out. It's the fence, our electric fence. Why don't you come along with me as we walk along the electric fence to repair the electric parts of the fence? And uh, it was a lot. But outside of that, it's, it's amazing. It's a great game. Yes. Um. All right. Yes, I, I want to play it. I, I, I do want to play the Walking Dead game. I guess I just need, I guess, like, at some point, now that I have, like, more money than I used to have, like, I do need to just buy a gaming rig and just have a video game machine that I play video games. Yeah, I'll tell you what, man. Steam is magical, and I mean to be honest, if you've if you've got a you've got a decent MacBook Pro, right? I do. Yeah, just just boot camp that. Most games scale down to to whatever hardware you got pretty well, and you could just uh, you could just boot camp it and and do uh, Steam. I'll tell you what. Oh wait, yeah. in Steam Play, it's Mac and PC. Walking Dead. Oh right, Walking Dead's on Mac. Yeah. Yep. What? What? Well, F my B. What's your B? But we should, we should uh we should get uh, choose your own adventure, bro. <laughs> <laughs> we should get Rooker back on the show. Rooker actually texted me because I wanted him on the Halloween show. Yeah. And yeah. he didn't text me back. And then he texted me back like a couple days ago and was like, Sorry, I missed your I'm I'm reading it. Like, yeah, <laughs> of course, it's Merle Dixon. Sorry, I missed your call. Let me know. We'll get up. <laughs> I said he didn't even say that. He said something far more. Rooker esque. Yes. Good. It's pretty good. Uh, oh, get, Sorry, get I missed the show, bro. Let's try it again sometime. Gatewag says that playthroughs of episode one and two are archived on YouTube now, which is good. Wait, you could play on the iPhone? Is that for reals? I think, I, yeah, I think that's new. Uh, let me look. Let me look. Let me look. Let me look. I'm like, what? <laughs> everyone in the chat room is saying yes, and by everyone I mean three people. And Vincent four hundred four said it twice. So, um, go away! God, the hitbox for the stupid X in the search field is the hardest thing to hit. Hit the go hitbox. away! There we go. The Walking Dead. Yeah. Um. Wow, dude, I'm gonna buy that. Looks like it's five bucks, baby. Hell yeah! That's, that that's got to be way per more episode. for Final Fantasy II with that terrible port they have on iOS. That's got to be per episode, so you'll end up spending the same twenty five bucks going through all of them. I assume. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. It looks like Walking Dead the game. Note. Like I'm sure it's probably like an in-app thing where yeah, it's like make sure it's by the next chapter, pay five dollars. Make make sure it's uh, by Telltale game. Uh, Telltale Incorporated. Yeah. yeah. By right. the way, hey, uh, real quick, let me give a big fat shout out to uh, Blizzard. I did uh, a game for the Go game uh, at Blizzard, and they were super awesome. They had a great time. Then get this, a couple dudes smoking cigars during the game. I'm done with the game, and I'm like, man, I'll tell you what, those cigars look good. I want to go smoke a cigar tonight. So I looked up on my phone, uh, Cigar Bar, and boom, I found one that was like two blocks from my hotel. Rolled on over there. Guess who's there? Half the goddamn Blizzard guys. Right Wound up hanging with, with, with the Blizzard people for like a couple hours. They were awesome. I'll tell you what. And there's something that I've noticed with companies that are good. And I, I just mean like in general. Good, profitable companies. Yeah, sure. Have funny, awesome, loose people. Yes. The tight companies that everyone's like watching their back and doesn't want to have fun. They're companies that are not as good. And I don't want to name names, but I could name names. And I will to Brian after we're done. Yes. That's why it's awesome to be Justin's friends. Eat crap, <laughs> losers. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, but no, Blizzard was absolutely so super dope. Uh, and 
I was working with a dude who uh, spends nothing but like his entire day working with a staff that tests Titan. That taste tests Titan what? AE. No, their new MMO, their their successor to Warcraft, is codenamed Titan. Oh wow! What? And uh, are you even allowed it to has say been that in testing for a years. billion years? Like and like it was this dude's job to like do that. And all I wanted to do, but I wanted to play it cool because I'm trying to be professional because like they're hiring me. Yeah, like, sure. Do thing. I didn't want to be like, oh my God, what is it? Tell me what Titan is right now. Can I lick your feet? Would you, that'd be weird if I licked your feet and then you told me about I mean, Titan? Like, let me just, just describe to me what Titan is and then I'll write it down on my journal. Um, it has a little lock on it with a little key that I keep going around my <laughs> neck. So I didn't do that, but I wanted to. Because I'm very curious to see, uh, like, when wow. we were writing Game On, like, that period of, <laughs> uh, of, of Blizzard pre, like, when they announced Mr. Pandaria and, like, what they were going to do and, and where they've gone since Mr. Pandaria, like, it has made what is coming next for them that much more important. And I'm sure. Super excited. Absolutely. Um, all right, man. I feel like I should go to bed if I'm a smart man. Yes. Uh, dude, another good episode. This was fun. I'm glad we did something kind of wild. And uh, boy, Chat Realm delivered on the phone calls. I like I like this open phones bit. We ain't got to worry about Chat Realm, man. Chat Realm's always going to show up. We tell them to show up, they're going to show up. Yeah. What is um, it? Yeah. Monkey Stick says, Titan will redefine free-to-play MMOs. Yeah. It's free-to-play? sure? That's the rumor. I mean, the rumor is they're not idiots. Allegedly. They know that like, the future is free to play, but sure. Dude, you know what I want to play is freaking Secret World. Unfortunately, it is not free to play. <laughs> 30 bucks to own and then like 30 bucks a month or something. By the way, $15 uh, a month. P. Del Hente says, uh, if Leo's out of town, are we going to sneak in an episode of Game On? <laughs> Holy crap, that would be the best. See, that that's what we should have done this week. Kick Padre SJ off. Let's have Brian fly in. Me, Veronica, Pride, and <laughs> Just you. Just do it after the twin. show, like normal. Brian. Holy. If I wrote an eh. episode of Game On, would you fly out for you and Veronica to do an episode of Game On? Sure, man. That would be amazing. Are you kidding? God, we should have had this idea like a week and a half ago. We could have totally made this happen. Um, on. I don't know if I should. S it, don't, don't bother her, chat room. Please, this is pinky promise between you and, and me. Um, but I'm trying to get Veronica on this week's twit. Do not send her anything. Why would, who are you, Chad? I, I just I don't. I like you just met the chat. I, don't I know. Want he them walks to up and he's just like, listen up, all you rattling snakes. Stop your rattling. Quit those <laughs> rattlers. Li right. No, listen, I'm going to stick my hand in there. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to muck it about and none of you bite me. None of you, uh, none of y'all bite me. You stop that rattling. Here we go. All right, you're rattling, and I think you're going to try to bite me. Now, I told you well, no. I think you're just rattling yourself out. <laughs> you just because rattled you're gonna yourself. you're going to rattle a lot now, and then you're going to rattle yourself out, and that'll be it. You can, Wait, hold on. You're <laughs> continuing to rattle. <laughs> this is. I'll tell you what. You're going to go and rattle time out if you don't keep up. If you better stop that <laughs> rattling, I'll put you in time out. Don't think I won't. Here we go. Uh Listen, I mean, uh, we, it's we funny all, because that's what I was. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Listen, if, if Veronica can do it, she will do it. She always loves coming on the show if, if her schedule permits. <laughs> what would it be? I mean, what would what be? I don't know. I guess we just do a normal ass game on. I mean, number one, we can't do a game. I mean, like we don't have time to do like an actual. Because if we wanted to be, oh awesome, my god, you're right. If I we would, wanted to be awesome, I would here's what we would have done. Someone if we actually if had, had any kind of foresight, here's right. what we would have done. We would have had this conversation a couple of weeks ago. I would have written <sighs> stuff. Dad would have. We would have been editing idea it. stuff. Yeah. Uh, Ryan would have flown out without anybody knowing because he has a little bit of time in his schedule. Although it would have bit into precious time like that he has like right now. But for the joke, we would have surprised everybody with like after twit. We wouldn't have told anybody. The game on would happen. Uh, we were smart. That's yeah. what we would have done. And uh, I would have also had like two weeks to edit. Possible, if only really the most impossible element is that like Ryan is just off a crazy road trip 
and like has well, and a plus, pregnant wife and a ton of s to do but if he would have been game to do it it would have been the, the funny thing is it would have been easier to do now than an actual game of game on or an actual episode of game on before because uh, i am here for you guys and could actually like direct the episode and produce the episode so two things one this is the worst week possible you know in all of existence in the i'm in the middle of leo being gone and i need to book the next two weeks like we're, we're now in the middle where i don't have that week of having leo because like a previous week ago i was booking the next shows now i've just been running and running and running and now i'm trying to do like two jobs at once on top of that um we were actually had this idea for omg craft doing doing a omg game on or yeah. a craft on uh, because we're gonna hit episode fourteen of OMG Craft, which is more, which is more than, than we game we on. did on Game On. Um, but I although think... you have yet to hit the budget spent on Game On, <laughs> um, yeah, no. and you will never. If you did a million episodes of OMG Craft, you would not hit the budget spent no. on Game On. But right on, um. <sighs> I okay, like, right, you I gotta just, go, right? Yeah, I just, I just hit the wall, man. I'm sorry. I gotta shut. I gotta shut it down. I wish. Uh, I guess we had we had a good time talking spoilers on uh, on uh, Walking Dead instead of breaking down a video. But we owe you guys breaking down a video for sure. Hell yeah! Listen, Ryan, sup? Get better. You got it, boss. Great app, though. I felt like this was a hilarious app. It was. It was way fun. It was way fun, and uh, man. Well, Funny how like we get relaxed. Three sponsors two weeks in a row, son. And I'll tell you what, man, our ads. Told the, you that we were sold out. Our ads are the best, are the most entertaining in the business. I don't know how effective though. We'll see how effective they are. And what I'll tell you what, I feel like uh, Mail Route obviously is a very very dear sponsor to us. I feel like that was for you, Mail Route. Pond I feel like we delivered on yeah. Mail Route. Oh, absolutely. But uh, Pond Five, I feel like, is a natural fit if they start if they start seeing all that traffic. Oh, around. number one, number one, yeah. Pond Five doesn't even know. Yes, they don't even know. We got to We got to show them the love. Let me know when you want to go. Bye. I'm leaving. You right know what now. I need to do though? What? Is play some music. Yeah. What? what? Okay. What? Um, just hang up whenever you're ready to go. I'm just can't bear to be apart from Brian and Justin of NSFW. Oh, I'd rather now you're live. And uh, yay, we're back. One second, bam, and then spam. Boom. Um, all right, I'm still. I'm not seeing what we're going on here. But oh, shh. is that not going to happen? Here, let me. Because we're not actually ending. I'm going to stop that music. Yes. Well, I mean, we're ending with Brian. Because Brian with has Brian. to go. Get the f out of here, Brian. Well, I mean, like, no, not get that out of here. He's, I'm kidding. I'm he's he's a part of the show. He's 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 the best ever. Not anymore. Whoa! Shots fired. Um. No, we're not deconstructing any more videos. Uh, but I'll yeah, go ahead and twist I'll the figure camera. it out. Twist I'll and shout. It. Twist and shout. Woo! Uh, so how has it been uh, booking booking Twit there? I mean, I mean, as you always book Twit, yeah. but like without without because Leo is is obviously the soul of the show. I mean, obviously that that's it's um, redundant, but well, um, it, it's actually not. The fact that it's it's um, bam. Let me see if I can do that. There we yeah. go. Yeah. Hey, if I was smart, I would have flipped that. But whatever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I broke it. And you broke it. And blue screen. It what down. did I do? Oh no. Um. Hey, it's back. There we go. Um. Uh. Actually, so so the the hardest part of it is um actually working with with the guest hosts because i know what leo wants so yeah. whenever i whenever i produce a leo Cause, show because it's a very free for it i mean like if, if right. for anybody who's never been a guest on twit which i'm sure is many of you uh it's a extraordinarily free form show yeah because leo is just so goddamn good 
Like, you don't need a game plan for him. He just gets, you know, you spread out a bunch of stories, and he goes where he wants to go. And literally the point of Twit, in terms of the the DNA of the podcast, is to spread out the awesome Leo content far enough to insert the ad reads that make the show. <laughs> yeah. You know, because he can produce unlimited amount of it. Right. That's the beauty of Leo. Right. Uh, that not everybody is Leo, you know, no. he is, he is a rare beast. And so it's hard when other people come in and say, oh yeah, by the way, do a, a hour and 40 minute show where you do compelling content consistently and also work in four ad reads. Right. And so it's, a, a, it's, a, it's the same amount of work as booking any other Leo show. It's just that I want to make sure that my guest hosts feel comfortable. So I run everything by them. We, I, I have to, you know, it, or, with a Leo show, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to aim for this type of panel because I know that Leo likes it. So I'm just going to go do my thing. I don't need to check in with Leo when I do that. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, and, and Leo, Leo, you know, puts in his input and then me as the producer of the show decides this is going to be a but, show. But his, his input is like, oh, that guy, I like him. Like, you know, yeah. like, I think he's good. Right. And that, you know, and that, and then that might have been that might have been three months ago. That yeah, he said exactly. That. Yeah, and and then my job is okay. You like that guy? Well, I also think that that you know, like okay, say he says he really likes Jason Snell, which is true. Yeah, and I'm like, great. Who's gonna as work? opposed to false? <laughs> right. And I'm, I'm like, I'm like, great. Uh, well, the people that I think work with good with Jason Snell is um uh Tim. Oh, I forget his last name. Uh. Just make it up. Anyway, yeah, Tim O'Reilly. Tim Minchin. Sure, right. And also Patrick Tim Martin. Tebow. So now I've decided the other two guests, and I'm just going to go ahead and book that panel for a week from now. Um, but with with um, Sarah and with... And this is not just for Twit. This is with all of Leo's shows. There's five of them, and this has all gone away th these last three weeks. Yeah. So... So I will here. I don't know why I'm on the double. Um, so I will go to uh, you know, say Robert Balliser, who's doing the uh, the so show. Wait, who is week. his panel? If he's not inviting me, and I'm not offended. It's it's uh it it. So first, when you book a panel, you send out a lot of emails, and you get who you get. Yeah. So I sent out emails to Molly Wood, Veronica Belmont, Kira Swisher, um, uh, and then there's like two other people. Dude, wait, you're going to put Padre SJ in the With middle of those personalities? Only girls. But no, 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 it ain't about girl or boy. Right. Like, Kara Swisher and Molly Wood. I don't know about, Kira's so hard to book. All I'm saying is if, like, yeah. those personalities, and, and rightfully so, are big. That is why they are who they are. They are they are great for 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 who they are. And I was on a show with Karis Wisher. I was on Twit with Karis Wisher. Yeah, like she's great. She's fantastic. She's the best. And also, she knows way more than any of us do. Like like we do a show about tech, and we're gonna talk about tech, and we're gonna talk about stuff that like she knows like personally the truth about. But like she's holding back because either she can't say it or yeah. she doesn't know enough to say it. Molly Wood was on Twit uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, coat maker. Um, yeah, no, that's a big, I mean, yes, but, but that's also what you want. You, you sort of want a panel that's going to run itself. Well, yeah, but also that's hard for Padre. Padre SJ ain't never fucking, oh, God. Oh, okay, let me just play a little bit of it. Okay. Um, uh, he's never captain that ship. That, that's a, but that's, he's, that's what he's good at. If you look at Twyat, it is. I I'm going to be the moderator of this panel. Here's the top. Here, like you're done talking about so that. So he's like, Judo. let me pitch. Let me pitch. He's like, this. Oh, you, oh, oh, you're coming in strong. Oh, what do you think right. about it? Right. Yeah. And he he is the perfect person at like, you know what? You're talking about your thing. Finish what you're gonna say. You're done. Here's the next story. What do you think about this? Bam. So wait, you know, do, you have the whole, do you have the whole panel? No, 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 no. I mean, that's what I'm doing now. I mean, that's why I'm stressed now. Resume, baby. Dude, you're, you don't have a badge. 
What? I mean, like, are you advertising this? It was a bit. It was a bit. It was a bit. like the old chick show. Yes. Plus a priest. It's 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 Father Robert and his angels. Like, oh my God, is that the angle? Yeah. Who who sold that angle? Him, not me. Him, which I think is great. It he's taking ownership, and it's it's a funny, it's a good bit. I'll go I'm giving drag. it all away. I'll go by and, the way. I'll anyone is watching, forget it all because. You know, Padre's probably this? gonna get mad at mystery, me. Mystery, mystery tech pendant, uh, <laughs> in a wig. If he emails me and says, you know what, we can, you know, I, no, I, I mean, it's it's his it's his show. Well, I, just saying. Okay, I'm waiting. I'm not in town a lot on Sundays these days. I know. Um, uh, yeah, I'll be I Justine. <laughs> Book me as Justine as Eric. It is it is hard um cuz it uh I mean normally we can really only get like one girl on the panel and it's just cuz it's just hard. I mean there it's just once you decide Well, to- number one that that gig, I mean, especially on the West Coast, yeah. like yeah. It's, and yeah, and that's it's- the other thing is I could get a ton of people who are all going to be remote, but that doesn't make for a great show. Like I want, I want folks to be happy. This is what I think about all the time: is is who works good with who. Yeah, I want them in house. Can I get them in house? Um, and this is just part of the job. The other part is switching all these shows. Um, well, we- yeah, but like this is, and, and you know, I think me and Brian have talked a lot about like podcasting being a, as as a uh, corollary to like the birth of radio. Whenever you read yeah. like old stories about like hey listen we had no idea what we were doing we just thought yeah. this person sounded good with this person so we put them on we recorded them we made sure yeah. they went out it's like the parallels are beyond shocking yeah uh when you look at like and the funny thing is like in 30 years you with the experience that you have will be like beyond anybody else because like it's all going here i hope so and and like you know uh whether or not it is on a podcast or whether or not it is on like long form discussion has always and will always be a thing you know before broadcast it was a thing uh so you figuring out how to create the best of those will be something that people want to listen to or watch always um yeah. Now, by the way, how has it been like now that you are a big in front of the camera success with Gizwiz? Uh, uh, what what has that been like? Um, I don't I don't know if I've seen that come down the pipeline quite yet. Well, well, number one, uh, let me just say this: two things. One, my own impression. One, other people's. You were on NSFW last week, right? Night and day from when you've ever been on NSFW before, even for like a cameo. Oh, like you were like a, 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 I told this to Brian, a, a confident, hilarious dude. It was like watching, it was the difference between like Gandalf the gray and Gandalf the white. <laughs> you were Chad, the, uh, Chad, the brown and Chad, the red, you know, like in terms of your hair color at least. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was, uh, it was awesome to see and it was great to have on, on the show and the show was better for it. Thank you. Uh, in terms of the Gizwiz. I'm in Orlando, and there is, uh, for the Go game, for those of you who don't know or haven't watched the episode where we did the Go game, uh, part of the Go game is we hire actors to be part, to interact with you while you're playing. When there was an, uh, there is an actor in Orlando who I had met before who is a Twit fan, loves Twit. <laughs> big, big Twit fan. And, like, was listening to Twit when I came on and said, hey, I I just got hired at the like Go, Go Game. Uh, and he's like, oh, God damn it. I know the Go Game. <laughs> uh, so I talked to him like while I was doing training about how I was coming out here, yada, yada, yada. So I came out back to Orlando and I did a game and uh, I had uh, that dude as part of it. And he was like, listen, I just listened to Gizwiz today. It was amazing. Chad was great, and apparently he won the what is it? 
Oh, game. cool. It was like Optimus Prime's condom or something. <laughs> cool. Yeah, that's normally what it uh, is. The, the one on there right now, it looks like a tiny oxen carrier. Okay. It's weird looking. So I call it a mustache holder two weeks in a row. <laughs> <laughs> I can show it to you right now if you want. Listen. Don't distract from the fact that okay. I'm trying to give you praise. Thank here. you. Yes. Uh, feedback coming back to me randomly. Wow. And, and like, like, I did not like, I was like, hey, I'm sorry. I know you would uh, listen to Twit. What do you think of my friend Chad's performance on Gizwiz? Like, he he dug it and, and, he, and, he, and he said it back to me. You're, you're doing great. And I, I think, like, you know, there ain't no reason why. And obviously, you do OMG Craft. It's a big hit, especially in, in that community. Mm hmm. But there ain't like you know more room for Chad to expand and do uh, bigger and better things. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, uh, the, the OMG Craft is where it all. I mean, Brian talks about how BB Live Show was his his way to really get his head around a, a live presence, you know. Yeah. And OMG Craft is totally what it is for me. It's it's the place to. Um, and Cheeto just said it in chat. If you look at the difference between episode one and the episode I do now, episode one was scripted so much that I had practically memorized the whole episode. Yeah, you can't do that. Right? And then episode two was this terrifying, like, oh, crap, I didn't practice as, as much as I did. And, and I mean, you can just see that it's actually, like, I feel like episode one was really good, and then two, and then three, and then four, and then five, and then and then I, I keep, you know, getting back up. But most of that... See, now, what, what you don't want to do is have your first five episodes completely marred by technical issues. <laughs> well, no... Uh, to, to, to the point where nobody wants to listen to you because it physically hurts their ears. Yeah. And then have a creative peak kind of happen... Around yeah. episode twelve or thirteen, right? Recipe when you get, for disaster. Right when you, you know, get canceled. Yeah, yeah, and well, and the, the truth is, is that I I could afford to do that because there is there is no audience for me. Oh no, no, no! no. I mean, like uh, you're 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 creating it, and and right. and also it's like Minecraft is number one. Here's something that I didn't know about Minecraft: how much. Kids under 10 yeah. are in love with it. Yeah. This is like a this is the Legos for yeah. uh for for a certain for a generation. A generation. Yeah. Like Minecraft is not going away. For anybody who thinks that like Minecraft is Angry Birds, Angry Birds will be dead and gone yeah. decades before Minecraft goes away. Because there is a a, a element, a, a young element. That is obsessed with it. And if Minecraft is smart and keeps it basic, you know, like, people are saying, hey, I'm 28 and I enjoy Minecraft. I'm not saying you don't. <laughs> okay? I'm saying you are closer to death yeah. than the people but who it's different. matter. <laughs> it's different because I've seen it happen. A, the, a kid like um, a, a kid will get on with his iPad and he goes to school and all the kids, all they do is talk about Minecraft. They talk about like, oh man, there's the Slenderman in Minecraft. And oh, have you have you found, you know, Joseph? Like I hear there's like this guy named Joseph in Minecraft. That, yeah. And it's like, it's all not real. And they're working on weird information in you know the twelve year old brain, um, but that's the, the the beautiful thing about it is that, and the reason why it's different than something in Angry Birds, which I, I mean I don't want to poop on because it is right. amazing. That's an amazing franchise, but what's different is Minecraft is basic. It is yeah. a basic idea, and when basic ideas get latched around, that's when phenomenons happen. Yeah, because comprehension is ninety nine percent of life. The fact that people understand it, yeah. and and but I I mean people I mean like you go around your family dinner table, like you can go around your family dinner table this Thanksgiving and say Minecraft is Legos on the internet. Yeah, they all get it. Yeah, it's also weird because it's it's basic, but then it can expand. It can expand really far exactly. to the point where there are professional PvP tournaments with brackets. With huge audiences, with streamers that all they do is like stream these live, like like it it is which, which, super which, basic. Which previously we've only seen with something like StarCraft, right? Which StarCraft is a extraordinarily well built gameplay, but yeah. is built on like you know 
intellectual IP, like yeah. the idea of the Zerg or the idea yeah. of of these characters that are, are written and are very specific. Minecraft is you build it, you build everything. Yeah, and, and that's it. And like, like the idea, and I forget which which game. I think it was like Stratego or something. It's like you know, uh, fifteen minutes to learn, a lifetime to master. Yeah, like. That that's a big idea. That's a very important idea. Yeah. It's something that Minecraft has. Like, yeah. you know, and for listen, I wanna like I, I would I would like to laugh off Minecraft because I, I'm an idiot and I like to <laughs> laugh at a lot of things. But like, you know, beyond the fact that many people in my life are obsessed with it, up to and including somebody I am a platonic friend with. Yeah. Um it it just the more I see, like I'm blown away, or I will be blown away if in the next. In fact, my goal in the next uh, couple months is to get my seven year old little brother into Minecraft because I feel like that would be very very good for him as a human being to think on that level. Do you want to do that on live stream? <sighs> Well, we'll see. That would be uh, the coolest. I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to make. I don't want to get into a privacy thing with yeah. his parents or whatever. But like, yeah. uh, me and my little brother were thinking about getting him a uh, either an iPod Touch or a Mini for uh, Christmas. Got it. And so if he can play, probably a Mini would be better for playing Minecraft. Uh, yeah. He has a computer though. You'd be playing Minecraft Pocket Edition, which is like. Kind of poo, lots of poo. Yeah. It's like I see a lot of kids playing it though. Mm-hmm. It's because they don't know any better. Well, he also is seven. He has exactly. Know a lot of, he has no better about a lot of things. Exactly. I, to me, I feel like it's the it's the Xbox knockoff that most people get their kids when they want to play Minecraft. Um, it's like it's like twenty versions behind the current version. Yeah, and um. You know, not good controls, and you're in creative mode, which isn't like to begin with. You can switch into survival mode, which is the normal gameplay yeah. on the PC. I but mean, he's different. got a PC. I, uh, yeah. it's, it's just a sucky PC. Yeah. I mean, Minecraft only re really requires half a gig of memory, and that's it. Uh, maybe. I'll tell you, people are saying the Xbox version is far superior than the Pocket Edition. Yeah. It is, and and they seem to be updating it a little bit faster because it's so freaking popular. Maybe but we it just is, need to it, get him. It a is Xbox. Truly, what I mean is he running two gigs of memory on his computer? Because that's well, enough. No, 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 no. His computer is a family computer. It blows. Ooh. Mm, well, yeah. Um, because because really, all Minecraft uses is memory, and that's it. Now, Pete Alhendi says, take him out of school and go play laser tag. Uh, my last week in Florida, I took him out of school and went to go see Avengers. Nice. Because I don't know if... if I, I, and I, Pete Delhenti is, is referring yeah. to the uh, Night didn't... Attack track where I was talking about my Uncle Bilbo, and that's what I did. I took him out of school. I wanted to be my own Uncle Bilbo. I took him out of school went to go see Avengers. What, what was the conversation when you got out of the school? Did you just go in the office and go, hey, I'm taking Billy. Well, no, 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 no. I, I was not. I didn't know any of the nuts that Uncle Bilbo did. Uh, he lived in a different era. <laughs> yeah. L the mid or late 80s. Hey, I was just taking a child from the late school. Late 80s <laughs> and the late uh, or the early uh, 11s are, were, were different times. Yeah. Because like he could just roll in and not being on a parent list is like, hey, I'm his uncle. I'm in a leather jacket. I'm driving out in a Camaro. <laughs> we're peacing. I'm taking this child. I'm taking this child. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but no, I, I coordinated it with his father. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we, we, he was all called in and then like, I showed up there, they called him, he double confirmed and yeah, I got to took him out. So, um, I didn't have this mustache though. Maybe yeah. with this mustache it would have been weird. Yeah. I don't know if you could pull it off. Um, <sighs> but no, I'll tell you what, maybe, maybe, uh. We'll see. Maybe I'll, I I might even just need to weed whack that PC anyway of just like all the nonsense. I'm sure it's just gunked up on it with a bunch of dumb adults. The, the thing is with Minecraft, and I and um, I'm trying to say this is uh, it doesn't require a, a graphics card. A, like it, the only thing it is used to run with is memory. Yeah, because it's all written in Java, 
and it will run on a single core processor with half a gig of memory, and that's all it needs because it's written in Java. So um, it could it wouldn't know what a graphics card was if it hit it in the face. Yeah. Um, all right, uh, real quick. Aaron yeah. Byrne says, Ricky Fu, show me on the doll where Uncle Bilbo touched you. <laughs> Let me tell you a real ass story, all right? <gasps> so after Night Attack, Night Attack Light becomes edition. a Billboard charting album. <laughs> okay? Yeah. Billboard charting album. Does does I tell my Uncle Bilbo, who <laughs> I have I have named Uncle Bilbo in, in the story. You're like, hey, you might want to listen to this story. I'm like, listen, uh, it's hilarious. I, I pay tribute to you. It was like one of my favorite moments in childhood. You should listen to it. The next holiday we're all together, and I can't remember whether it's Thanksgiving or Christmas. Uh, he's like, hey, listen to the album. So, so many more better stories. I don't know why you told that one. What? And I'm like, oh, man, that sucks. Like, it sucks he didn't dig it. Then I talked to my my aunt, his wife, and she's like, listen, uh, he was kind of upset because you made pedophile jokes at the beginning. Aw. It wasn't me, by the way. Aww. It was somebody else on the album. On a two-man album, it wasn't <laughs> me. I'm not going to say you. who it was, yeah. but it was somebody else who made a joke about him being a pedophile. Aww. And, uh, and I, I rolled with it. That really rubbed his his goat the wrong way. Uh, yeah, his goat got rubbed. Oh man. Uh, which listen, okay, someone's like, oh, grow a pair. I'm sorry. Listen, he's an older dude. Like he got rubbed the wrong yeah, way. I'm he, sorry. Listen, he hasn't looked at 4chan ever in his life. No, no. Like he's just. I mean, like because for him, like listen, I told him it was a Billboard charting album. For him, a Billboard charting album is yeah. a big goddamn deal. Yeah. Something a lot of people listen to. We're not saying that a lot of people didn't listen to this, but like we know that a lot of people for us is yeah. a couple, you know, tens of thousands is gigantic. Right. 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 Hundreds of thousands is huge. Right. Uh, like I would say if a hundred thousand people ever listen to night attack, it would be beyond our wildest dreams. Yeah. Even now knowing what kind of success it is. Like I would guess in the, in its total run, maybe 30,000. Yeah. yeah. You know? Um, so, uh, so, so just because of that, he didn't like it at all. It's just one of those things where it's like, He's a dude. I mean, you ever have something where like something rubs you the wrong way at the beginning? Yeah. And, and the rest of the duration of it is you trying to can't. dig itself out of that hole. Yeah, you just can't enjoy it as like, much. All the fun stuff. Wow, that's a great shot. I know. I, I forgot that I had it. Um. All through that track, it's all about like, hey, here's a really, really, really cool dude. Here's how awesome he is. Yeah. And then everything else is like. You know, like you're coasting on how cool of a guy he is. Yeah. Because it's not like awesome stuff. It's not like, yo, and then he saved a bus of orphans. <laughs> yeah. It's like, and then he got high and took a child to, you know, a laser tag thing. It's like, it, it's not yeah. something that everyone's like, well, that guy's awesome. It's do just. You, do you think he was bent out of shape because of that? Because it was more like. I mean, have you ever talked to him about it later and been like, oh my God, no, number were one, were you like, crazy no, high? No, no, no. All my hero worship from him has been completely above board. It's not right. like he was talking to my mom. It's like, yeah, you know, this happened. And I'm like, oh my God, it's awesome. <laughs> like, we've talked about it After. very matter-of-factly. Got it. You know, Got it. to the point where I've, I've, I've said, listen, you know, I've always remembered is that day you and Sandy picked me up and yada, yada, yada. Uh, and he was like, wow, was I high off of cocaine, man. That was crazy. He wasn't coke. It was bad. Um, but like, yeah. uh, but yeah, no, I mean that's cool. That's always that's always something we've talked about. So I don't think that was necessarily it's not different than the story we've told yeah. to each other. Yeah. You know, from either perspective. Yeah. But it was it was it was the pedophile thing. Damn. Uh it sucks that he didn't like it. But my aunt liked it. And that's good. You know, y'all liked it. Uh, so that's all that matters. Uh, I'll always listen, he can't shake me as his nephew. And I can't right. shake him as my uncle. Right. So he's gonna have to be okay. About <laughs> Live it. with it. Yeah. Um but I do wish that we hadn't made the pedophile joke at like in like the first thirty seconds. Yeah, yeah, that definitely sucks when when yeah that gets to him. Um, yeah, 
What else is going on? I don't know. Well, I feel like uh, whatever, uh, it's going to be rapid fire because I only have this much left on my beer. Yeah, I finished mine earlier. Uh, so if you have any topics you want to talk about, you better get going now. Uh, hey, oh, Jesus, somebody purchased it for three ninety nine in Canada? That's awesome. Nice. Term 24, Jeff Ferks really wants his mustache back. If you mention that somebody's mustache looks like Jeff Foxworthy, you might be an internet troll. You might be a racist. <laughs> <laughs> um, do, 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 do. Dude, those, those rope lights look really cool. In, uh, no, man, this looks awesome. This looks amazing. I've always said, I have always said that this perspective is the coolest in the Twit Studio. Yeah. From the second it was built, yeah. this was the coolest in the Twit Studio. Yeah, we just need to get rid of that monitor. Um, all right, Chimera says, uh, Petraeus, I talked about this a little bit on the morning stream uh, today, so you can download that if you want more stuff about Petraeus? it. Chad, have you heard about this? The, no. the general Petraeus thing? No. So General Petraeus is the dude who's in who, charge uh, of the who turned around the war in Iraq. Right. Like it was going like crap. He blitzed it. Uh no, surge. 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 Yeah. That's right. Um and now he is the head, or was the head rather, of the CIA. Oh, didn't he step down? He stepped down recently because he had an extramarital affair and it was Ooh. picked up on by the FBI. Um what I said on the morning stream, and I will say again here to you guys listening to mm -hmm. the after show, is that if I were president, I would show up to the CIA office with two things. My Box, iPhone. Box condoms. My iPhone and a carrot. And I would say this. Congratulations. You're my head of the CIA. Put this carrot in your butt. I'm going to take a picture. I'm going to have that picture. I'm going to do whatever I want with it. You're the head of the CIA. Don't make that show up. <laughs> track me. Track my email. Track everything I do. I want the person who's the head of my CIA to make sure that that carrot in the butt picture does not ever surface. <laughs> and boom. That's yeah. what I would do. So he was, wait, was he head of CIA? Yeah. And it got leaked that he was having an extramarital affair. That's that's the, yeah. So as it is known now, uh, the person who was having an affair with him was his uh, woman who wrote a biography about him. Now extraordinarily, unfortunately titled "All In." <laughs> uh yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, pretty bad title. So uh, maybe she was thinking about it. Maybe that was like a, you know, what do they call that? A forty and slip. A fruity, yeah, exactly. Yeah. A Freudian slip. Yeah. It'd be all up in. Yeah, my veg. I'm all in on this book. Yeah. Uh, so apparently, what happened is that she thought this other lady, who is like speciously tied to the military in Tampa, uh, was sleeping with General Petraeus, and so she sent him. A bunch of, or, or sorry, she, sorry, she sent her, the other girl, a bunch of emails that were like, stay up off my man. I saw you touching his junk under the table, right? Wait, okay, so who was sending the emails to who? All right. The, 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 the person let, he was let, sleeping let, with. Let, let, let me put names on it. Okay. Petraeus is the head of the CIA. Right. Broadwell wrote the- uh, Biography. Biography. She's banging Petraeus. Right. Okay. Broadwell sends emails to his wife? No, 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 no. Got it. There's another girl named Kelly uh -huh. that Broadwell thinks Kelly is now sleeping with Petraeus. Got it. So she sends a bunch of threatening emails to her. Yeah. Now, meanwhile... Good thing that emails can't be copied or forwarded in any way. Absolutely. All right. Now, Kelly knows somebody in the FBI... Now, meanwhile, Petraeus is the head of the CIA. The FBI and the CIA don't like each other. No. -uh. Okay? She knows someone in the FBI. Let's name him Tom. <laughs> okay. Okay? Merit. Tom. Not Merit. <laughs> okay. But maybe. But maybe. Uh, okay. Who knows? Tom is infatuated with Kelly. 
Ooh, huh? What? Okay, how did this come out? Before Kelly ever goes to Tom about this particular thing, Tom has already sent her what is characterized in newspapers as thousands of explicit <laughs> emails. Wait, whoa. And Kelly trusts Tom? Kelly's into that. I'm going to do this long because I love this shot. I, okay. I'm going to do it with you. All right. And amazingly, both hands Tom are in the shot. Trusts, or Tom, she goes uh, to that. So, meanwhile, people in the FBI realize Tom's way too obsessed with Kelly to be dealing with this. Right. So he gets pulled off. Got it. At that point, and this is like weeks ago, okay, Tom is afraid that the FBI is going to bury this investigation. Which, okay, uh, the the next point I was going to bring up is why the heck should the FBI be investigating some some case about two people banging? Well, for a couple reasons, and and legitimate reasons. Because uh, if you are the head of this many secrets... And you have a vulnerability, like mm. you're having extra marital, marital oh, affairs. You're right. You're right. It you're can right. be exploited for blackmail. You're right. Okay. 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 You're right. You're right okay. about that. So meanwhile, Tom, who by the way have sent has sent thousands of explicit, including shirtless pictures. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, which is something that I find hilarious that is being singled out. Uh, <laughs> Because I'll guarantee, if somebody sends somebody shirtless pictures, they've sent them something in text that is horrifying to read. Yeah. Or really embarrassing at the very least. Yeah. Um, he goes to a congressman because he's afraid that this is going to get buried by the CIA. Yeah. And says, by the way, all this is happening. <sighs> so now the Congress knows. But meanwhile, and this is before the election, we don't hear about it. Until after the election is decided. Now we hear about it. Does that seem like like weird? Yes. Mr. Senator goes to Petraeus and is like, yo, I have this information. And Mr. Petraeus is like, keep that under wraps and I'll now, make sure that you get the Senate. It, it's a Republican congressman. Someone's like, trying to blame Obama. <laughs> I'm not trying to blame Obama. I'm trying to blame <laughs> People in power. People in power trade other people in power for what does trying to blame power. Obama even mean? O- about what? So yeah, the, I, I'm not saying the that, I'm not saying that Obama's like it was a Republican. Con- it, was yeah, a, it was a Republican, Republican con- congressman. So I'm not saying that like it was a uh, it was a a, uh, a uh, democratic conspiracy. Uh, I'm not saying that. Yeah, I'm saying that people in Maybe they waited to verify the facts. Okay. Number one, there's no, no. there's no. no secret keeping in Washington. No. And you're going to do that so fast. The like, only there is keep no a secret waiting. is if you know you can trade that secret for something better. Right. All right. So, oh, my God, it was Obama's fault. It's Obama's fault. I don't it's understand Obama's how Obama fault. got in this conversation. No. Maybe I'm drunk. Uh, Okay, I am so, drunk, and I'm not playing Obama. Right. And I don't like Obama. Right. So, okay, that'll so, tell so, you how le- little I think Obama is the, the reason of this. Um, so here we go. Uh, so now, all Congress of a sudden, knows. all this breaks, and the added conspiracy element on it is that Petraeus was set to uh, testify about everything that happened in Libya on September 11th. And the conspiracy theory is... Next September 11th. No, no, no. no. The, the whole thing that happened in Benghazi this September 11th, where there was an ambassador killed. Oh, 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 oh the thing that yeah. happened on September. Yeah. Not, so he was there, there's ready. a bunch of testimony okay. said to happen in the next, right. I guess, couple days. Um, and so, oh, if you were to believe conspiracy theories, which I don't, uh, the conspiracy theory is... That Petraeus wasn't going to play ball with what Obama wanted to have be the series of events that happened. And that because that happened, Obama's like, well, okay, go play this card. Mm -hmm. Which I don't think. 
Do you really believe, says Gadawag, which is a joke from last week or uh, yesterday's weird things. I don't think that. This is not a, do you really believe the general Petraeus' investigation only came to light this week because the Benghazi thing? No, I don't think that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so that's the whole Petraeus thing. And again, I think this should all be settled and so, wait, wait, wait. with the carrot in the ass picture concept. So wait, I still want to wrap my head around this. Because he is now no longer the head of the CIA, he can't testify in the Benghazi trial? He can. If anybody, anybody can be called to Congress and testify. Stephen right. Colbert was called to Congress and testify. Oh, yeah? For what? All right. So anybody can. The question is whether or not he will, or whether or not, because even on the other side, if let's say General Petraeus has some horrifying things to say about Obama's leadership during Benghazi, will he be a credible witness after what just happened? I think people put too much weight on who sleeps with who. And is that just me? Um, I mean, yes, I get, I get the blackmail thing. Like yes. that understandable but then they're like oh he's sleeping with this other chick i gotta cut to this shot so uh, i mean listen uh, who cares well you know I, I think that there is there is an element of it there there, there is an, an 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 element of where people if because if you're dealing with public figures you don't know these people you know what they are put out you know, you, you know, like people who are watching, who have watched NSFW for over 100 episodes, 153 right. episodes, right. right? Right. They don't really know me. No. They don't really know you. No. Like, you know, because we've been friends. Right. You know more of me than random people to watch. Right. Even explicitly. Right. There are times that I will talk to you and be like, man, I was going to say this in the show and I did right. because this, 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 and this. Right. right? So if... Imagine magnifying that by oh so many to people on a national stage. We only see what they put out, and it is natural curiosity that we want to fill in the rest of who they are. And if there are elements that come to light that are troubling, then I can't, you know, I can't fault people for wanting to Ugh. to add that to their calculus. I totally can. It, it seems so silly. Like I don't know. It's like the two callers that were like. Man, because uh, what do you think about Katrina? Doesn't that just murder, murder your, your views? And it's like, really, your mind went there? Like, like that's well, like that's how I feel about this whole like I mean, someone listen, sleeping listen, with listen, someone let, else. I mean, it's like, 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 you're gonna make that judgment call based well, off of this a limited amount of information that you know about this person. I don't know if I'm just a weird outlier that looks like like wow. I don't know all the information about what what happened. I don't know this person. But looks like he was sleeping with this other chick who he wasn't supposed to. Okay, let's go on with life. But everyone else is like, wow, he needs to leave the CIA. He needs to have a career crush. Well, uh, Tunes199.9 says that the head of the CIA should know how to communicate with his paramour more intelligently. <laughs> um, so, you know... I don't know. It's just like I guess I guess my brain just doesn't doesn't fathom the 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 disconnect of from one jump like you're cheating on your wife to you cannot run the CIA. Not possible. People are saying and here's a tech angle on this that nobody is talking about. And uh Sap here has it. Apparently all of this communication that was going on between uh, Petraeus and his dude or his chick he was banging and the other people was all put together or was all operated on, not on their official. It wasn't like they were idiots and used their official emails. They used Gmail. And the FBI couldn't get it? Couldn't No, understand. they did. Very easily. Oh, so they were foiled by Gmail because, well, that's just email. Well, I mean, not email, Gmail specifically. So it's like, there, there all, is a question. All email can be read. Yes, all email can be read by eyes. But the question is, is what is Google's threshold 
when somebody at Google gets a call saying, give me these people's emails? I, I don't think it's true. Um, emails are sent unencrypted from one end to the other. That's why it's ridiculous that someone would email you your password because anyone can read it if they are if there's a man in the middle of attack, which the, the, it's known that the government does that at huge ISP junctions. They yeah. just filter everything. They get it all. Yeah. So I, I don't I don't feel like that's a Gmail thing. Um, okay. uh, and on top of that, there are laws that say emails are like postcards. Anyone can read them. It's not illegal for anyone at all to read your email. Anyone, even non-government agencies, because it's like a postcard that has the writing written on the back of it. Yeah. That was sent in the mail. I don't yeah. I don't feel like that's a Gmail problem. It might be that there was a government. But the thing is, Gmail is really transparent about who, about their government requests. They yeah, they're going to just give it up. They say, well, you can go to transparency.google.com, something like that. And it's just like uh, the U.S. government asked for 15 requests this month, and they were this, 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 and this. Yeah. Not expects, not specifically who, but like uh, they were email requests. They were blah 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 blah. They're just gonna give it away like the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Pretty much, pretty much. So I don't, I don't, I don't know. I, I, it, I could be wrong, but I don't feel like the Gmail. It was, it was Google that ratted them out. They should have used Tor. <laughs> So there we go. That that's the Petraea story. Huh. 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 I mean, listen, but are you really shocked that people care about like who people sleep with? Yeah. I well, to the to the point that it's I mean, a, like that people it's a career care about ending. the whole like 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 the like I joke about the whole like like you know uh the whole platonic friend thing. Yeah. People, I mean, like, I mean, not like people care, 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 like, really care about that. But they're curious about it. There's, that's the reason why it's a funny joke. To me, that home life is completely separate from your your person, public life. Like, 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 no, they're not completely separate. They're going to mix. But the job that you work at should not care about what happens at home. And it depends. It depends on what you do. Because let's say... Like I mean, that's why I thought it was ridiculous that that uh, um, Clinton was up for impeachment over. Oh, oh, by, the, by the way, people are saying that apparently they were using drafts in Gmail, and we're just giving each other each other's passwords. Oh, that's cute. And that's then, cute. and then the FBI found all of it. Oh, that's cute. I'm surprised that he's the Which, head by of the, the way, CIA that, 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 and that, can't that, That's also out. what I've heard is that, that was, that, that's an Al-Qaeda thing, too. That they don't... They, they, they never write each other emails. They they uh, write each other's drafts, and then you get the password and username. That's cute. Um, huh. So uh, that would mean Google is complicit in turning all this crap over. Yeah, that is. Yeah, you're right. Now, someone... It went by really, really fast. Uh... uh that's they said they had a warrant, but so, I, I'm I haven't done any research on this. I don't know, but truly, like like, seems to me if he was running the CIA really well, it, I, I don't know. I, I mean, you're talking about the most, two of the most sophisticated intelligence agencies in the world. Yeah, trying to bang each other. Yeah, sure, I get it, but. I I get that the FBI and the CIA have a problem with each other, but um, the fact that that's such a big scandal that it requires him to step down as head of CIA sort of blows my mind. I mean, like, the word is he might face charges over it. Because he's banging some other chick? Military code says you can't. You can't go outside of your marriage. <sighs> So not like I don't I don't think it's like legal legal charges it's like military charges. He could be brought it's before like, like a, a, an to MP make it, to make it as like simple as possible. It's like you promised one lady that you would only have sex with her. You had sex with this other lady. Now you're fired. It's like really, really. I mean, he let it he let it blow up. Whatever it was, man, he let it blow up. He's out of the CIA again. This would never happen if this was the carrot butt picture <laughs> method. 
As soon as that carrot, but I would tell the I would tell the world. I'd be like, listen. I have taken pictures with a carrot of the butt of some of my cabinet. If that gets out, it's on them. If they don't, then sleep tight at night because they are keeping that away from you. Yeah, I am. I am surprised that the head of the CIA couldn't figure out how to how to keep messages secret. Absolutely. Uh, all right, we should wrap this up because I do have to pay. Okay. Uh, goodbye, everyone. We are going into this reruns. This ended our episode of uh, Chad and Jesse Shoot the Poop. Chad and Jesse Shoot the Poop. Uh, talk to you guys next week. Goodbye. Big on the All right, everybody. Oh.